On today's episode of Homeworthy, we're taking you inside the spectacular River Mansion on New York City's Upper West Side, currently on the market for $24 million, to show you how designer Jay Jeffers infused soulfulness and warmth into a once drab library. Swapping the original recessed can lighting for dimmed hanging pendants was pivotal in bringing a romantic feel to the space. Jay opted for an earthy wood treatment on the ceiling and a rusty wall color to emphasize the stunning built-in bookcases trimming the room. Enjoy! You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. Like and subscribe for more! Hi, my name is Jay Jeffers. I'm an interior designer with offices in San Francisco and New York, and we are sitting in the library right now. Who is Jay Jeffers? Oh my gosh, that's a loaded question. <laughs> uh, Jay Jeffers is a person who loves design, and um, I feel like in a way, I was always meant to be in design. Obviously I was, because I am, but um, it kind of found me. I was, I have a marketing background, I lived in San Francisco and I worked for The Gap in their corporate headquarters in advertising. I thought that was going to be sort of my path um, to be in the business world but be creative and it wasn't. And I took a class at night, an interior design class. This was 25, 30 years ago. Fell in love with it for the first time in my life, thought I could see myself making a living doing something that I really enjoyed doing. So from there I went back to school and worked for somebody and then in 1999, believe it or not, started my own firm. Well, this room, before I got my hands on it, this room, you know, it has great bones to it. It's on a corner, it's got views, nice windows, good proportions, so that, that had it going for it. Um, it probably, I'm guessing, had been redone in the mid 80s. You know, there was uh, probably about 30 recess cans in the ceiling that were the really big 1980s recess cans. So we got rid of those really fast. Maple floors that were popular, you know, 20, 30 years ago, we stained those. There was kind of a large um, overbearing fireplace mantle that, that we lost. But other than that, we kind of, uh, this just needed some love and some wonderful decoration. We didn't have to do too much in terms of construction work in this room. So welcome to the library. This space, um, in its raw phase, it was light wood floors and white walls and some stained bookcases. So we kind of emphasized all of the beautiful bookcases. We stained the floors dark. I wanted to give it an intimate feel. Um, did this beautiful wood treatment on the ceiling that I think really just kind of gives it that earthy, wonderful kind of glow in the room. Um, I love a library with many kind of uh, seating areas or conversation areas, I call them. So right in front of this beautiful fireplace mantle here, we've got sofa, a pair of wingback chairs. You've got to have wingback chairs in a library, a great place to put your feet up, grab a book. Did something kind of fun instead of your typical lamp on a uh, end table we hung a pendant over the coffee table here i love this piece with its really gorgeous jewels this is like the jewelry of the room the, the final touch of the room when i design a library for myself or for clients or for anyone it's sort of it's a place where i feel like memories are made and you can sort of stroll down memory lane too i love bookshelves because it's not just a place for books. It's a place for artwork. It's a place for things that you might have picked up on your travels. It really is um, an, an opportunity to show who you are. Um, it's a place for individual expression, perhaps. So if I'm doing this for a client, I'm asking them, you know, do you have things that you've picked up? Do you want family photos in the, in the shelves? Do you want your own books? Do you want me to curate books? You know, how does it all come together? Over here, we've done a wonderful, beautiful desk. And to me, like a sculptural desk, you know, people don't sit at desks that much anymore. So you want it to look good if you're not sitting at it, but it kind of invites you to sit at it. This is by Aaron Poritz. Um, he is, was a ceramicist or is a ceramicist in Brooklyn uh, that got into woodworking. You can kind of see that ceramic looking quality to it. Kind of reminds me of Wendell Castle. Uh, we did a beautiful little game table. You gotta have a little game table if you've got room for it. Perfect for backgammon, setting up bridge, that sort of thing. This is by Blackman Cruz with this beautiful apparatus fixture hanging a little lower than what would be normal, but I like that too. You can do that in this room and this kind of sits in front of the beautiful windows. Bookcases galore. I had some fun with the paint. This is a lime paint that we did in a, I call it Rustique. It's a Benjamin Moore color called Rustique. We added lime to it to give it a little bit of texture. 
had fun with a little paint treatment up here, um, painted over the books right there that you see, little elements, um, and then accessories, sort of all your favorite things. I actually brought all of my design books that I've collected for years. You can see a bunch of them right here. Um, lots of my friends that have done books and design books that I've referenced for, for years. Right, bookshelves do not need to be just for books. They can be if you've got that many books, but also things that you've collected over the time, over years. Um, if you travel a lot, if you pick something up, it's always great. Ceramic things that you love, um, small pieces of art. I love putting small pieces of art in the shelves of the of bookcases. I think it just gives it kind of that soulful, earthy, unique um, interest. With a library, I usually start a little bit on the calming side. I also want it to feel very romantic. So libraries for me, when I think of a library, I think of a, a darker room. Um, this room has beautiful daylight and beautiful windows. So we wanted this kind of rust coloration on the walls and we did this beautiful lime paint, but then we did, we sort of lightened it up a little bit with a wood ceiling. Um, but that kind of gives it an earthy tone, um, and I think those kind of things make a library really sing. Every library needs a bar. I mean, I think every room needs a bar, but library bars are fantastic. You know, put your favorite liquors. Uh, this is bourbon and tequila is my thing. Um, this is a fantastic little lamp, battery-powered lamp by my friend Barbara Palatin in bronze. Add some glasses, make sure you've got an ice bucket to throw your ice in there, and you've got yourself a party. My favorite thing about this room really is the feeling that you get when you enter it. It feels cozy and warm. There's a vibe. I have music playing. I have my favorite incense burning. It's all for a reason. It's also when you walk into this room, you really feel like you've been transported to a different place. This room kind of gives you that vibe and it feels like you kind of might be in an old manor in the Cotswolds outside of England or something like that and you're coming into a room that's rich in history and makes you want to just pull out one of these books and sit down with a, with a bourbon or something in hand and spend a little time. Also, don't forget about the art in a library or any room for that matter, but art to me is just, it's another way of expressing your individual style and taste and, and, um, and look. Um, in my case, I've done this sort of like bi-coastal thing with New York and California artists. This is Rex Ray, um, California artist. This beautiful piece is a New York artist and, you know, there's not a lot of wall space in here because we've got great windows. So we hung art over the bookshelves, which I think is always a fun touch, that layering effect, that sort of maximalism. But, but in this case, I think edited maximalism, I would call it. My top three tips if you're thinking about designing a library or creating a library for yourself, intimate conversation areas. And that may be, you know, if you need a desk, make the desk cool and comfortable, the seat that you're sitting in comfortable, a little living space like a living, a sofa, a pair of chairs, an ottoman, something that's comfortable and cozy that you can really see yourself reading a book in. Um, I say this for everything, but I think it's even more important for a library, dim lighting. So if you've got a chandelier, if you've got recessed cans, if you've got lamps, whatever it is, make sure you can dim them down because you want that sort of cozy, library, earthy vibe in this room. Oh yes, and don't forget the books. <laughs> you need books in a library for sure, you know, and if you've collected books yourself, my only rule when it comes to books is no paperbacks out. So if you've got paperbacks, put them in a drawer and buy some hardback books. If you're not buying hardback books these days, start buying some. Uh, you know, I think those beautiful books are art books. So art, design, make, buy my book. I've got two of them. <laughs> you can put it in the shelves. But those kind of things in shelves, they're, they're soulful. They feel good. They're wonderful. And I'll give you a pro tip. There is an online spot that you can go to called Books by the Foot. They have beautiful, wonderful books. So you can also fill some of those shelves, those top shelves that you might not be able to reach with some beautiful books that give you the room of like kind of a soulful feel to it. Thanks for watching. For more homeworthy content, be sure to like and subscribe.